All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, so in this episode, we're going to just quickly review what we've gone over so far um, and then jump right into it and keep working through our image and kind of a good workflow or process setup that you can copy and work on in your own, in your own astro imaging. So, so far, just real quick, I go out in every video, so I'm just going to quickly get it out there. We star lined, we ran automatic background extraction on all three layers. We've ran an easy denoise script, which removed noise from each image. We ran the SHO AIP script and ran the remove pink halos, which removed the pink halos around our stars and got rid of the magenta problem that you sometimes get with SHO. We ran a background neutralization, which uh, neutralized our entire background of our image. Easy soft stretch to, to take the image from a linear or nonlinear to a linear state. We ran SANR to remove the green cast, and here we are at easy HDR. And I'll leave that up for a few seconds just so everybody can copy and see where we're at. We're right here. All right, so the next step is Easy HDR. We're going to go to Script, Easy Processing, Easy HDR. We always click Understood on that. And again, we want to select our most current view, which is the Mix SHO AIP. I keep these settings the same, but it blends the layers. Sit back, wait for the uh, Run Easy HDR to go. This is a pretty fast process I found. And we're done. We see on the screen we have a easy HDR run complete. We can close out of that. And then you can close out of this if you want to review what it uh, added a high dynamic range to. You can go over that. It doesn't mean HD resolution. <laughs> and then this just shows a, uh, I believe this would be the new image, but in my opinion, I usually go with the other image, this one right here. So I don't know if that's the correct way to do it, but that's the way I do it. All right, so our next step is the local histogram equalization. We want to go to process, all processes, local histogram equalization. Now I have a tip, again I accredited uh, Andy Robertson back in my other videos. Um, I usually run the local histogram EQ at the amount of three um, and that seems to work the best for me on a lot of my images. Um, just because if I try to push that amount anymore, um, let's see if we can see, as you can see on the image, that brings out a lot of detail that you wouldn't have before. All right, so we can see that. And we can, you know, kind of play along and watch as our image grows here. Um, it's pretty neat, you know, it's starting to really come together. So next, this part's a little more confusing. I will explain kind of my process and how I got this, why I came up with this. So after local histogram equalization, you'll see I have luminance mask with a HS stretch to darken the background. What that means is I'm going to create a luminance mask to just mask off the luminance layer of the image. Then use the histogram to stretch this back to darken the background so I only have the large nebulosity excuse me, large nebulosity as my focus point. So to, to create a luminance mask, the easiest way, you see this button right here, the rainbow with the little gray square next to it. Extract the CIEL component, which means luminance. Click that. Now we have an extracted just a luminance layer. So we will open that up a little larger. We want to go to process, intensity transformation, histogram transformation. Select our view, which would be Nix SHOAIPL for luminance. Hit the reset. Now we'll make sure that we just darken off enough of the image. Oh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> Forgot to pull preview up. Um, this little button here, if you hover over it, it's a real-time preview. So you can see live what you're doing. Now I don't. I try not to go too dark on this. Um, you are clipping some of the image out, but this is a luminance layer, so you don't really have to worry about those figures too much. Um, and right about here is where I would go. Now, if you notice, it takes the background out, but still keeps our nebulosity. What we're doing by doing this is creating a mask that we can only work on the 
actual nebulosity of the image. There's another way to do this with Starnet Plus, but that will be in a different video. This is the way that I think is a little easier to start when you're just getting into SHO and um, trying to work with nebula a lot of nebulosity. So you drag right here, you drag this right here, and you'll notice that the image is extremely red on the screen, and you can even see it in my glasses here. It look like RoboCop. <laughs> If we pull back up our workflow, you'll see LUM mask turn off so you don't see red background. What that does is if you go to mask, show mask, it turns the mask off for your view. Happens in Photoshop, a lot of other programs have something similar. The way you can tell the mask is still on is right here. You'll notice that it's an orange highlighted. That means that the mask is still on. And if you hit show mask, mask is on. What that allows us to do is if we go to Intensity, Transformation, and Curves, we can now hit a real-time preview and run curves on just our nebulosity, or as best we can with this process. So right away, you'll notice I have curves multiple times, three or four small adjustments to not blow out or get color artifacts. So right away, I do a few small stretches, one, and right there you can see we're bringing a lot of color into the image right away. So I usually run one about there. I try not to clip this top part too much out. Um, do the best you can. Try to keep that in there, and I hit square to run that. And then if I like what I did, I hit it about two more times, so one and two. Now you can see we have a nicely colored, uh, this is a recent image, and in this case, I'm going to run it a, th a third time, or uh, uh, a fourth time, actually. So now you can see we have a beautifully colored image. I mean, this is an image that not a lot of people would have. This is very looks very nice right away, you know. Um, and I think this is a very fair to kind of start to getting into a finalization of a project. Um, so we can close out of that. And then we still have that luminance mask on, if you notice. We still have that on. If we hit invert mask, that will invert the mask to everything but the nebulosity, i.e. just the stars and the background. Uh, I, actually, I don't believe the stars are in this because they look pretty red. But just the dark background is not protected. So again, we're going to go to show mask and turn that off. And the step we are on is the inverse mask RGBK slider to dark in the background. We're going to go to process, intensity, curves go to our RGBK, and now I usually do a very small S-curve. So I take this, and again, this is for our background, and we don't want to get it too dark. A common problem is a lot of guys want to really darken the background up. That removes a lot. See, if I do this, you see how much I lose, and that just looks really dumb. If I let it too bright, that doesn't look right either. So I generally go to right about here, and I grab right here, and I try to pop that up. If you notice, that that just gives an extra pop. Now, some people do this, and that really blows an image out. You see how the background looks like it's dark as a black cat. Way too dark. You don't want that. So if we reset this, and we go a little bit here, a little bit here, a little goes a long way with an image like this. And that's all I do for that. And now you'll see it looks crazy dark, but if you close out of your curves transformation and your preview, here's our image. Now, I think this looks pretty good. We're getting pretty close to a nicely refined image. And you see, throughout the series, we're about an hour in. It really doesn't take too long. Um, the star size look good. Now, I don't know what that does. I believe deconvolution would fix that, and I'm learning just like you are from watching these videos. So maybe someday I'll show that off too. We want to make sure that we remove our mask. And I just like to delete it and get it out of the way. We're not really using it anymore. Um, and it just makes it simpler. So we have a couple little things we can do to tweak the image at the end. Um, I sometimes run a second easy denoise run. In this video, I'm not going to do that because I'm not publishing it. I'm not, you know, going to show off the image that much. Um, and then we also are going to do an easy star reduction. Now I've already ran it on this image, and I kind of know what I'm looking for. So if we go to easy processing suite star reduction you'll see here that we have the um, mix SHO again and on this one the best I found is the two iteration of the star reduction so I'm gonna run that 
and I will be right back. So right off the bat, you might be able to notice the difference in our image, and I will actually undo it to show you. So I hope you can see this. You know, we get a, a nice reduction in star size, and what that does is it takes a lot of that focus on the large stars away and, and blown out stars and actually makes, if you notice, there's nothing going on with the nebulosity. It doesn't change at all. If you look right here at this little blue brain nebula guy, oh, doesn't do anything to him doesn't change it at all and what this does is it allows you to focus on the nebulosity stars are neat but let's be honest we're into this for the nebulosity nobody's just taking pictures of the singular stars for no reason there are cool clusters and lots of things like that but the random unnamed stars aren't what you're after you're un after these fighting dragons and they are awesome the last thing I want to show you is we also have a um, star reduction star map here and this can be used to kind of review what went on. And like I said, through the iterations that I used for this image, I used two. Usually I use the default of five. That works pretty well. It's really up to you. It's a super easy tool. I was only gone off the video for about three minutes. So you could run it four or five times in 15 minutes and kind of pinpoint down what size you like. You'll eventually learn, um, depending on how large your stars are, what your setup is. If you use a reflector, you sometimes have more saturated larger stars. If it's a refractor, sometimes they're a little tighter. Just up to personal preference. All right. Well, that's the end of the series, and this would be a finalized image. I'm going to upload the full image at the end so you can kind of see what we worked with, but I'm glad you came along for the ride. Any other questions you have down below, um, just let me know. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs>